We're looking at a cell and its surroundings, ignoring all molecules except the purple oxygen molecules. As you can see, there are four molecules on the outside and none on the inside of the cell, creating a concentration gradient that, over time, allows the molecules to move from higher concentration to lower concentration by diffusing through the membrane. The molecules are constantly moving due to Brownian motion and will distribute themselves evenly across the membrane because it is most energetically favorable for the molecules to be as spread out as they can. After the system reaches equilibrium, the molecules may still randomly pass through the membrane, but there will be no net movement. Glucose, which is also an uncharged molecule, is too large to simply diffuse through the membrane. It needs a carrier protein to transport it to the inside of the cell. The light blue carrier protein contains a binding site for glucose. When a glucose molecule happens to flow into the binding site, it binds to the carrier protein, which then changes conformation and releases the glucose on the other side of the membrane. This process will repeat until the molecules are equally distributed on either side of the membrane. Normal resting cells are negatively charged on the inside, creating an electrochemical gradient that attracts positively charged ions from the outside. Here, a gradient of positively charged cations has collected on the exterior of the cell. However, because the ion channel is closed, they are unable to enter the cell. As the ion channel opens, the ions are attracted to the negative charge inside the cell. If the charges are equal inside and outside the cell, then only Brownian motion dictates the movement of ions. If one escapes, it will create a negative charge inside the cell, pulling another ion back inside through the same channel. If we experimentally induce a positive charge on the inside of the cell, the ions will be driven out in order to counterbalance the induced charge.